The United Nations Security Council has held a meeting to discuss several issues related to the Middle East. At the session, the Security Council condemned the recent bombing of the Iranian embassy in Beirut. The council members called on the Lebanese to preserve their national unity against attempts to undermine the country's stability. After the meeting, Syrian ambassador to the UN Bashar Jafari spoke to the press and said the condemnation of the Beirut blasts by the Security Council was a step in the right direction. I'm saying that because in similar opportunities and occasions in the past where hundreds of Syrian civilians got killed by similar suicide attacks in, in Damascus, Aleppo, Homs and other cities, the French delegation, the, the British delegation, and the American delegations, by rotation, prevented the Council from coming out with a common position. Later in the afternoon, the third committee of the United Nations General Assembly met to discuss three proposed resolutions. One of the resolutions, put forward by Canada, accused the Islamic Republic of Iran of rights violations. But Iranian ambassador to the UN, Mohammad Kazayi, rejected the allegations and accused Ottawa of changing the facts on Iran. In the absence of any representation in Iran, and thus alien to the factual situation on the ground, the Canadian text is replete with fictions and devoid of facts. Clearly, isolated human rights cases could not and should not provide any ground for submitting a country resolution to the General Assembly. Kazai also condemned Ottawa for depriving the hundreds of thousands of Iranians living in Canada of their consular rights. He also said it's ironic that Israel, which has a long history of abusing the rights of Palestinians, is now supporting this anti-Iran resolution. Many countries came to Iran's defense against the hostile Canadian resolution. Among the countries that opposed the resolution were Venezuela, Cuba, Belarus, and Syria. Caleb Maupin, Press TV, New York.